Huli Huli chicken is one of the most popular foods ever in Hawaii. The flavor of the wood smoke, the savory sweet sauce, open flames licking at the chickens. We are looking to learn from the best and see if we can perfect the homemade recipe. Subscribe for popular Hawaii recipes and more playlists on Eat and Be Eaten. Aloha. Welcome to Waimea, a ranching town on the north side of the Big Island. It sits at 3,000 feet, right in the foothills of Mauna Kea. This is GJ's. They've been making huli chicken kohala side for years. They're a fixture here. You can spot them by the plumes of blue smoke billowing across the highway on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay, this is one of the best huli huli chicken spots around. Let's get some and check it out. If you're ever nearby, treat yourself. This is the gold standard for huli chicken on the island. Okay, aloha. Can I get a half a chicken? Sure. Thanks. Ten dollars. Mahalo. Okay, so here we go. We got half the chicken. Got to eat a little while it's hot. Coming in the plastic bag, not ideal, but... Mmm. Mmm. That is one of my favorite foods in Hawaii. Maybe my favorite. Mmm. Come on, have some. Mmm. Okay. Okay. So, the question is can we use our own rotisserie and make something that's this good? Let's head back. We're gonna break down the whole process step by step. The first thing I notice is the sauce. It's got a honey amber hue to it, and if you look closely, you can see lots of tiny red specks. The taste is sweet, but also deeply savory and with some tang. And of course, smoky, but that's coming from the wood, not the sauce. Huli chicken was invented in 1955 by Ernest Morgado and Mike Asagi. They were the founders of Poultry Pacific. At a farmer's meeting, they hulied some chickens between two grills, and it took off from there. The marinade they basted them with was described as a special teriyaki sauce. Ubiquitous, of course, in the West, the word itself breaks down to the shine of the sauce, as well as the cooking method of broiling or grilling. Three parts. Soy sauce gives the base of umami. About as much honey or sugar for sweetness, and some acidity to cut through in the form of sake or mirin, a sweet cooking wine. The question then is what makes huli sauce a special teriyaki? In fact, put it in the comments below. What do you think the secret ingredients will be? The big difference is swapping pineapple juice in for sake as the acid. Also ginger is a prominent flavor like usual in Hawaii. In my opinion, there's gotta be some spice and the best options are sriracha or chili pepper water. You can watch our how-to video on that in the link in the upper right corner. And I can't prove it, but Morgado was second generation Portuguese, and I can't help but think at least some of those red specks are from a signature spice in Portugal, paprika. First test run is with marinated boneless thighs turned on the grill. Now that I know the ingredients, I'm especially aware of the ginger and pineapple. Paprika may or may not be my own addition, but it works either way. This is delicious. I can tweak it a bit, but we know we've got the sauce right. Next step, these coals provide the heat, but it's not huli chicken without the signature flavor of the wood smoke. We've come over to the Kona side to gather what might be the single most important factor in an authentic recipe. 
Kiave wood. These trees were brought by missionaries in the 19th century, and today line large swaths of coast on the dry side of every island. They're also a tropical member of the mesquite family, the type used in world-famous Texas barbecue. Pairing this bold and unique flavor with chicken is unusual, a Hawaii culinary contribution. It also makes for the most delicious white crystalline honey I've ever tasted. I'm getting some from my friend at the farmer's market to put in the marinade. A whole chicken takes at least three hours on the spit. The kiave wood provides an intense dry heat, but for that long the skin would burn before it's cooked through. So either cut your chicken in half lengthwise like the pros do, or take some logs and make kiave charcoal with them to augment with a more sustained slow burn. Right here we're using macadamia nut wood from our orchard. It's easy to do at home. Cut the bottom out of a metal bucket and attach a grate. Start a fire until the wood starts to blacken, then cover the top and the bottom to create a low oxygen retort. The wood will slowly smolder at low heat all afternoon, and at the end you'll be left with light and flavorful charcoal. The final step before I set up the rotisserie machine is to make a wet brine. Bring salted water to a boil with aromatics like lemons, garlic, and herbs. Let it cool completely and soak the chicken for 12 hours. Then drain the brine and let it air dry, uncovered, in the fridge for two days. This seasons the bird and keeps the flesh moist and tender, even as the skin gets crispy over the open flames. We're using a solar fridge that we've devoted entirely to curing meat. Those swinging hams you saw are from a wild boar we hunted and butchered almost nine months ago now. We also made Portuguese sausages with it that are in the freezer. Stay tuned for the update on how the hams turned out. That video is coming out soon. Okay, now we're ready for the final cook. I'm going to call you in trouble for